joining us here at Newton Abbott Racecourse on Tuesday the 29th of August. It's 5.46 and um, beautiful sunrise behind me as you can see. Uh, Simon and I here just about to go out and walk the course um, prior to our evening meeting here at Newton. Um, the ground's currently described as good, good to firm in places. Um, we're just going to make sure that the water that was applied to the course yesterday uh, hasn't all disappeared in that blazing sun. Uh, yesterday we had a temperatures of approximately 23, 24 degrees and um, yeah so hopefully the, wa the water we put on or the boys put on yesterday they worked pretty hard hard old morning yesterday. Uh, hard um, day. So obviously we're running around assessing the going. Uh, we are Clark's courses are now guided by the, the, the British Horse Racing general instructions that we have to give a going assessment not only based on our trusty stick which Simon has and he's using brilliantly but we also have this thing it's a going stick which you may have heard of um, it uh, we will uh, take readings at approximately 40 points across the course from the hurdle to the steeplechase course and it will give us a number and that number relates to a going description and then across the course it will give us a, a final assessment as to what it thinks the going is and by and large it and I tend to agree uh, we don't have too many arguments um, and we're duty bound to provide that reading to the racing public on decoration morning so that was yesterday morning and the case of today and this morning so that's what we're doing we're doing a go around so in, in the case of the going stick what we'll end up doing for example I'll just give a brief demonstration we will push the stick into the ground once then pull it back twice pull it back three times and pull it back it will then give us a reading so at this position waypoint seven you may be able to pick that up it's telling me it's 6.6 .6, which I would assess as good good ground essentially um, and I would concur with what I sort of feel sort of you obviously get a feel for it over with experience but I'd assess this part of the course this is the part of the course adjacent to the riverbank this is good ground um, so, uh, steeplechase fence is a second steeplechase fence in the back straight there are seven steeplechase fences on Newton Abbott and um, one open ditch which is the next one on uh, five planes and one water jump uh, the fences are renewed on a rolling cycle so one year we'll build rebuild four and then the next year we'll do three and so on and so forth so the birch in this fence this fence was actually built rebuilt last year um, there'd be just as a sort of rough guide um, there'd be approximately 300 bundles of birch in the main chassis by which I mean this part of the fence there's like 300 bundles of birch in that. Birch costs around £5.50 per bundle. So you're looking at well in excess of 1,500 quid in that part of the fence. And then there's probably about 500 quid's worth of birch in the apron. That's the bit that the, sits in behind the guardrail. So every other year, you're spending around two grand to renew the birch in the fences. So you can see it's obviously quite a, a costly exercise when one rebuilds a fence. Um, birch is sourced, comes from the southeast. We buy it from a chap in the southeast, grows nice and straight over there, and packs in to make quite nice fences. And the importance of a fence, or, or, from, our, from our point of view, it's always nice to have what we a, a decent belly on the fence. So, a decent, you may have often heard people talk of the belly. This is the belly or the apron, and it's nice to get a nice bit of shape on that. Um, just so it just gets the horses to stand off and not jump too low and flat and by and large touch wood the horses do seem to jump our fences quite well I hope I haven't jinxed this evening's efforts but um, yeah that's the second fence in the back okay so what's the next job then Jason right okay so we have just um, updated the going and we've left things as good good to firm in places Simon I'm very pleased to say is extremely happy with the going description given he's been invaluable in ascertaining that um, we report the going on our uh, going certificate okay and this is produced to the stewards on the race day so I've obviously had to make entries at various points a uh, week before I give the going for entry purposes horses are entered five days prior to the race day and then any changes throughout that week 
we keep the going report updated so that trainers are aware of how the ground is changing, whether it's getting wetter in the winter or in the rainy period, or whether we're irrigating and what our plans to irrigate are. Um, we've, as I say, we've given the ground as good, good to firm in places, and that has been reported on the admin site, and the stewards will pick up on that. And now people, trainers all around the country, will be looking at our web website this morning or the administration website and making their final plans for their day's travelling. A number of other forms that we have to work with. Uh, we get sent down from the BHA a microchip chip checklist. So all horses are microchipped and they're checked back in accordance with the records that are maintained at the BHA. Um, passports required. Some passports are required to be checked uh, on race days. Horses that are having their first run for a trainer, uh, first run after a layoff, number of reasons, but they, they're all checked and they're checked upon arrival at the race course by the BHA security team. Um, my team of staff are sort of all allocated their fence to work on. Uh, we have a team of three staff who are primed to put into process a bypass procedure should we have a faller at a fence or a hurdle and also to put the ground back, reinstate the ground so they'll be forking and treading the track back in between races. Uh, and on each fence also we have an individual has allocated the role of horse catcher. They'll be wearing some sturdy boots, a hat, a skull cap, and they're there to assist in catching of loose horses. The nature of Newton Abbott being such a narrow track, it's important that we catch a loose horse before it can become a problem a few minutes down the line when it's going back the opposite way against the, uh, the field as they come around the bottom bend. So we need to put into process procedures that would take that issue away as far as we possibly can. Obviously loose horses can be troublesome at the best of times. Um, we have a work regarding our roster for doctors, vets and paramedics are all in place and they're put into place before the seasons e even commence. So we know that we're using our paramedic service, we'll have three ambulances on site, we'll have three doctors on site, we'll have a first aider at each fence or each obstacle and we'll have three equine vets as well as the BHA veterinary officer we'll have three veterinary surgeons that we employ as a course to look after our equine athletes on the day and and the final aspect of that would be our horse recovery service where we have an ambulance which can pick up uh, recumbent injured horses off of the track and take them back to the stables for further assessment Um, so this, we've got lots of bits of kit which are important to the to the job that we try and do, um, but none more so than the irrigating machines. You see here we have two of them. Um, you may well have seen uh, these irrigators in use on race courses, but this sort of irrigator is used extensively in market gardening and market garden uh, arrangements. And the boom, which is the piece of aluminium or steel on the back, opens up. Um, to give a 26 meter span and you see on the these are the sprinklers so the boom is opened up chocked and then the tractor pulls away from the boom and that hose reel then unreels and will travel 220 meters down the course at which point it's plumbed into the irrigation or the water the main water system and we irrigate from the river uh, and then it's pulled in, it's retrieved, and we can either slow it down or speed it up, dependent on how much water we wish to apply. 
Uh, for this meeting, uh, today, last week, last Friday, we applied, well, parts of the course had as much as 26 millimetres, the home straight, which is traditionally the quickest part of the course, uh, and the rest of it had 10 millimetres last Friday, and then we irrigated the course entirely yesterday uh, with between 10 and 7 millimetres, and we've sort of that's how we've come to achieve the ground that we have, which I've given, as, you, as we've said earlier, is good and good to firm in places. It's a two-man operation to water the track and to put on seven millimetres of irrigation takes approximately six to seven hours um, dependent on moves and other idiosyncrasies. But essentially both machines work concurrently so one will work in the home straight, one in the back straight and as you move the one down the home straight the one moves down the back straight and they just basically move opposite each other and as I say, six, seven hours, we can put on approximately seven mil. Um, two man operation to do so. So it's quite a uh, labor intensive operation. Um, for a small team, um, which we have here at Newton, uh, there's myself, Stuart, my senior ground staff member, Wayne. Uh, Wayne and Stuart have been here collectively for thick end of 25 years. Stuart's been here for about 18, Wayne for about seven. We supplement. Um, our full-time staff with one casual member who starts at the beginning of our season so we have him on a six-month contract um, we have Richard in the stables and during the season Rich is in their stables mucking out rebedding uh, keeping the parade ring spit and span and we have a maintenance uh, man maintenance manager in Colin Bushen and Colin's responsible for the fixtures and fittings within the buildings um, and then after racing, we'd have approximately 14 to 15 casual crew that come in for treading and they assist us and we go out treading with them and then we'll fill the course after we've lifted and, and trod back and fought the course. Um, then we move all the rail, all the bends get moved between each meeting. So there's approximately, you've seen us moving a bit of rail this morning, there'd be approximately three quarters of a mile of rail that we move for each meeting so between now and Saturday when we race next on the 2nd of September we'll have had to move the thick end of three quarters of a mile of, race, of rail we'll obviously move the, the hurdles fences will get knocked back trimmed up patted back repaired um, and obviously the ground will be reinstated uh, and obviously the track needs to be mowed so there's, there's a there's a fair bit of maintenance to go on between each meeting and obviously with meetings only three or four days apart time is key really. Uh, so a number of years ago uh, for about four seasons now we've had the rubber padded hurdle these are traditionally filled with birch just as a steeplechase fence is filled with um, but yeah as I say a number of year, years ago four years ago we trialled them and we've had them ever since and it's been our experience and now the experience of I think there are seven courses now that have the rubber padded hurdles the horses anecdotally seem to be jumping them an awful lot better the small injuries lacerations cuts that we've seen to horses forelimbs have reduced um, and as a consequence you know from an equine welfare perspective which is why they were introduced as an idea to try and improve that, those statistics they've been a, a success as a byproduct of that the number of breakages of hurdles that we see are significantly reduced um, the pad seems to have the effect of dissipating that energy from a horse hitting the hurdle across the whole six foot board uh, and as a consequence you know the breakage the, the, the impact on the horse's legs is significantly reduced and the impact on the hurdle is significantly reduced and, and we're seeing less breakages the horses have seem to be faring better um, because we're not getting uh, as many we were, it was never a major problem but we were you know horses were getting cuts and nicks which was ruling them out for of work for you know two or three weeks at a time energy level drops off a bit and they weren't able to compete possibly as often as as they might have been so they've been we find thus far been very successful and we've been very pleased to have them Okay, so um, in recent times, um, over the last 18 months, racecourses have gone through 
the process of re-measuring and recalculating race distances as we're advertised or as we advertise and we also to reflect the changes that rail alignment makes to the race distances and this morning we're here we're just moving the final bit of bend uh, and in fact we're actually taking our rail back to its baseline positions that is to say 18 months ago the course was re-measured and but and all the steeplechase starts all the hurdle starts were measured at the rails innermost or its baseline position thereafter as we move rail out it has the effect of increasing race distances and at Newton Abbott for example this bend here the bend out of the home straight for every two yards that this rail is moved out makes a difference of three yards for each two yards moved out so effectively if I move this bend out by four yards it increases the distance by six yards and bearing in mind they may go around this bend three times in a three mile race there's 18 yards just on this bend and with a bend with four bends essentially so one can see how rail alignment affects distances to some extent when we are pushed to its widest configuration it can make the difference of a well over 150 160 yards here at Newton Abbott so it's obviously important that we do remeasure or reflect that in our going assessments and you'll, you'll your readers will have seen on numbers of occasions where in the racing post they'll carry the going description for the day but they'll also include detail about rail alignment and differences made to race distances.